Uh, hi, Patrick. Nice hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah, yeah you just had your talk. Uh, how was it? Oh, uh, very good. Yeah, very big audience. A lot of people who are wanting to build stuff, but also build teams who build stuff. Cool. So for everyone who haven't catched that, Patrick Kua is the chief scientist of the mobile bank N26 based in Berlin, Germany. He's also an author of three books and a really cool guy and also really tough guy. Uh, <laughs> really handsome. So uh, we have, first of all, we have a comment online, which I really appreciate for, for people to ask to use something. And I really say ask more questions, we'll definitely answer all of this. So the question is uh, when N96 will allow registration from Lithuania? Uh, well, I think what's interesting with N26 is banking regulations change all the time. And so our departments are always sort of testing to see what things are, are uh, allowed and not allowed. And it has to be sort of managed by risk. Um, so our, our team doesn't have like, we can't predict when that's going to happen. Um, so they're looking at it constantly, but then they always see if it's a, it's a good chance. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of driven pretty much by like legal technicalities and what our team can actually uh, sort of demand or cope with the demand. Okay. So, but no direct answer when uh, more or less. Well, it's not clear to me though okay. because it's like when again one once of those things where there's a lot of things always going on and it's really up to the legal teams to see how much they can actually cope with and there's always lots of stuff going on with lots of different uh, countries uh, okay. all the time. Ah, so we'll have to wait for, for some time at least. Yeah. And uh, what was your talk about? Could you shortly present what, what was it about? Yeah, so um, my talk was called Talking with Tech Leads. Uh, so one of my personal passionate topics is really helping engineers move into a technical leadership role. Mm. Uh, and a lot of this is really quite a big change in both sort of how you think and how you think where your role and your value add is. Uh, and then sort of moving into the sort of leadership role. So it's quite a challenge because as an engineer, you're like normally rewarded by what you produce, the code that you write. But as a technical leader, it's quite different. So a lot of people think it's more of the same role, but actually one of the key takeaways is really helping people understand it's a separate role and it requires diff very different skills. Okay, so what kind of the skills are, when you talk about leadership, what kind of skills are you talking about? Yeah, because basically we think of, of a develop yes. developer, someone who is just yes. sits and does code and does programming, but what kind of skills do they need really? Yeah, so it's interesting because a lot of our uh, companies uh, don't really reward some of the skills that are required for leadership when you're an engineer, right? So. Yeah. Um, you know, a good one is listening. <laughs> so engineers like to give their opinion, they like to sell their solution and have their sort of solution, the winning solution. But actually one of the key skills as a good leader is actually listening um, and also working out how to resolve conflict amongst many people, right? So as an engineer, you're normally like championing for your solution, but actually as a leader, you're sort of responsible for trying to build the best solution, which actually may be elements of different people's solutions put together, but you have to be able to sort of create a right atmosphere. So listening is a really good one. Um, I think a lot of uh, other times is sort of communicating very well with different people. So one of the challenges I see a lot with technical people is particularly talking with say product people, or marketing or other parts of the business. So once again, as engineers, we're normally used to talking to other coders with the terms. We assume that they know the acronyms, technical terms, uh, our world, but actually- That's not the case usually. No, it's a very different world and, and it's not something you get to practice often. And you know, when you're in that role, you have to be able to communicate very effectively or people in the business won't take you seriously. Talking about listening, I'll just grab my headphone, which I lost. Yeah. yeah but uh, and what about talking about you personally? Uh, were you always like that, uh, a programmer, but also at the same time communicating really well? Uh, was it hard for you to develop these skills or were you born with it? How would uh, you say? No. So uh, these are all learnable skills. Um, I think uh, so. I what, what, what helped me develop some of these skills is as a consultant, mm -hmm. um, particularly working for ThoughtWorks as a um, consultant building projects and product with companies is you have to build good consulting skills to be successful as well, right? Yes. So you're typically sitting on site with customers, either with customer engineers, trying to work with them on solutions or their architects or tech leads. And so you have to get their buy-in, but you also have to be able to work with business people. So I think, you know, for me, my background was always sort of programming. And then my sort of skills of listening and things like that really accelerated as I moved into consulting, because you have to practice a lot of those skills. So these are all learnable skills, okay. but it's often like one of those things where you don't normally focus on learning them. 
Okay. Is there any secret or SIP on, on, on how to learn this? How to learn this? Because do you have any secret um, idea or is it just like you go, you try, you fail and how does it work? Uh, so like everything, it is a lot of practice. Like uh, as I say, with engineers, you do a lot of code carters, you do a lot of exercises. Similarly, you can practice these things, but I think what's important is breaking it down into specific skills. So leadership skills, you know, there's like 15, 20 different types of skills. So, you know, be it like coaching or how to ask the right questions or um, listening or uh, resolving conflict. Each of these are very individual skills. And uh, what's really great today is that there are so many different opportunities out there to learn. So really good books, lots of obviously information on the internet, um, lots of training courses. Um, and yeah, but the key is really to sort of practice these things and then sort of make them part of your everyday, yeah. right? That's something that we could all learn, you know, and uh, me and uh, everyone and for the developers, I think it's normal. It happens to me too, like when I have to work with my computer a long time, when you just get up and you have to talk with, communicate with someone, yeah. you're just like, oh, well, wait, what, I'm still in my Excel or Word or programming, I yeah. guess. So yeah. it's hard to switch. So it's really cool that you talk about that. And I think it's really, I kind of feel pity I haven't been, been listening to your talk. So sorry, but uh, I, I, I know what uh, most of the people were listening for it. So thank you very much, Patrick. It was nice meeting you and have a good time here in Vilnius in Lithuania. Thank, thank you a lot. Thank, thank you. Thank you.